All right, thanks for watching. And today, uh, I would like to answer a question a, a commenter asked me. Namely, I would like to derive the formula for the Poisson kernel. And it uh, sounds interesting. Poisson means fish, kernel is popcorn. So maybe like a new version of popcorn, I don't know. But anyway, so it's the Poisson kernel and it's a really nice uh, summation formula, sort of similar to the uh, sums of cosines or something. And, um, and I'll also explain you why it's so important at the end. Namely, let's try to figure out the sum from n from minus infinity to infinity of e i n theta times not r to the n, but r to the absolute value of n. So basically, uh, for positive n, it's just r to the n, e to the i n theta. For negative n, it's r to the negative n, e to the i n theta. And in fact, this is a sum from negative infinity to infinity, so let's just split it up. That's the sum from n from negative infinity to minus 1 of r to the absolute value of n, e to the i n theta, plus the sum from n from 0 to infinity, r to the n, e to the i n theta. And let's call those two things a and b. I skipped a little step. It's r to the absolute value of n, but if n is greater or equal to zero, we can just remove the absolute values. And in fact, let's deal with b first, because that's easier. So b, it's simply, again, the sum from n from zero to infinity of r to the n, e to the i n theta. But notice, this is just a common factor. So sum from zero to infinity of r e to the i theta to the nth power. And all you use now is the formula for the geometric series, which says it is just 1 over 1 minus r e i theta. So you use your best friend. And forgot the sweater, unfortunately, but yes. So it is true the sum of x to the n is 1 over 1 minus x. One little remark, so this is not always true. So essentially, the absolute value of this has to be less than 1, which basically means r has to be less than 1. And in fact, there's super interesting behavior at r equals 1. And we'll talk about that. In fact, this is, this is what makes it so nice. So on the one hand, b is that. And now, let's talk about a. It's simply just the sum from n from minus infinity to minus 1 r to the absolute value of n e to the i n theta. But if n is negative, this absolute value of n is just minus n. And if you like, and assuming we can rearrange the sum, this becomes r e to the minus i theta plus r squared e to the minus 2i theta plus r cubed e to the minus 3i theta, etc., etc. But notice, you can just write this as the sum from n from 1 to infinity of r to the n e to the minus i n theta. And the reason is you want to use a similar trick here. Just one thing, well, to use a geometric series, we have to add zero, the zeroth term. Well, we can do this by adding and subtracting one. So it's really the sum from n equals zero to infinity, r to the n, e to the minus i n theta. And then again, the zeroth term becomes one, so in order to make this valid, you subtract 1. And you get, again, the sum from 0 to infinity of r e to the minus i theta to the n minus 1. And then, now we can use your best friend, but with uh, r e to the minus i theta, and becomes 1 over 1 minus r e to the minus i theta minus 1. 
and that is the result of A. And then all we have to do is just add A and B together. Okay, good. And so our answer is just minus 1 plus 1 over 1 minus R E I theta. Sorry, minus 1 plus R to the 1 over 1 minus R e to the minus I theta plus 1 over uh, 1 minus R e I theta. And then let's just put everything on a common denominator. So it's minus, uh, I guess, um, yeah, minus 1 minus R to the E minus I theta times 1 minus R e I theta over 1 minus r e to the minus i theta, 1 minus r e i theta. So in order this indeed becomes minus 1, a weird way of writing minus 1, but it's true. And then this one, to complete this, we just have to add 1 minus r e i theta. And to complete this, we need to add 1 minus r e to the minus i theta. This is good, and now let's just foil everything out, and we'll see, maybe there's a simplification, hopefully. So, minus 1 uh, plus r e i theta, and then, uh, let's see, plus r e i theta, uh, plus r e i theta, plus r e minus i theta, and then minus r squared e to the minus i theta, e to the i theta. But notice, this is e of 0, which is just 1. 1, and then what, plus 1 minus r e i theta, plus 1 minus r e to the minus i theta, over, so the same shebang, 1 minus r minus e i theta, and minus r e i theta, and then plus, again, r squared, times those two terms, which is 1. And then let's see, is there a simplification? Yes, indeed. So the minus 1 cancels out with one of the ones, and then all those exponential terms also cancel out. So it's like an exponential extravaganza. And therefore, in the end, the numerator becomes 1 minus r squared. And well, the denominator, you can simplify this a little bit more because this becomes minus r times e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta. Well, it looks almost like cosine, except you need to add and divide by 2. So multiply and divide by 2. And indeed, this becomes minus 2r cosine theta. So we get uh, 1 minus 2r cosine theta plus r squared. And therefore, so our thing here becomes, the sum is 1 minus r squared over 1 minus 2r cosine theta plus r squared. And this thing is what's called the Poisson kernel. So pr theta. Almost like my name, Payam Ryan Tabrizian, except Tabrizian or something. Well, no, and sadly, it's called the Poisson kernel, and let me show you why it's cool. So, by the way, if you really want to write this in just complex fashion, that's the same thing as the real part as 1 plus r e i theta over 1 minus r e i theta. If you calculate this out and use conjugate forms and stuff, in the end you can show this is true. Now, why is this so important? It's very important in analysis, and especially complex analysis. First of all, remember what I told you, in this geometric series, no. in this part here, it's a problem if r has radius 1, because then we're sort of 
on the bad radius of convergence. So, but it turns out this drawback is actually a feature. So, here's why. So let D be the complex disk of radius one. So just, uh, yeah, the disk of radius one in the complex numbers without the boundary. Then this thing, so given a complex number Z, you can write this as R e to the i theta, and this transform form, if you take any function and this Poisson kernel, PR, theta minus t, f, not R e i t, but e i t, d t. So, it's kind of interesting. If you have a complex number of radius r and any function, on that unit circle, so e to the i t is precisely this unit circle. If you take the sort of convolution, so minus t t, and then this is the Poisson kernel, then this resulting function is harmonic. So this function is complex differentiable, and Moreover, u has the values of f on the uh, disk. And u equals to f on r equals 1. So it's actually it's a nice sort of uh, an, what's called an analytic extension. So given a function on this disk, uh, sorry, very important, given a function just on this circle, so given f on this circle, can you ex have a differentiable function on the whole disk with whose values agree on the circle. And indeed, this is true. This is an analytic continuation of the function f. And f, I don't think it even has to be like crazy, you know, it could be not even differentiable or something, and it would still be harmonic on the disk. But don't quote me on that, that might be wrong. Um, that's one thing, and also in terms of your like Dirac stuff, if you take uh, this again Poisson kernel, then at least in the in LP, or I guess sorry in L one, L one of the unit disk, let's call it the torus. Uh, this Poisson kernel in L1, at least in the weak sense, converges to the Dirac delta distribution on that disk. So let's call it Dirac of theta, namely the distribution which is one on the circle and zero everywhere else. So this is what's called an approximation to the identity and that helps us getting nice modifiers. So we don't not only have this nice explicit formula, but this thing is very important. And I, I don't know how to prove those things, but uh, I think it's still cool. All right, so if you like that and you wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.